Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Art Snacks. It is Monday, 1230, and you are here with Sugar Hill Art Studios for Art Snacks every day. Not every day, every Monday. So come on, let's grab our watercolors and... Um, yeah, I'm going to show you a really fun little um, just technique today. We are wrapping up our April Flower Prompt Challenge. All right, I have in my free group where we've been posting and where you need to be if you want to join into the challenge and be entered to win prizes and the giveaway. We have one grand prize. That grand prize is going to go to someone that has finished all 21 prompts, has hashtagged, has shared, has put everything in there, um, you know, shared it in the group and use the hashtag so I can find them. They've got some entries going into the hat. We also have, um, you have a little bonus. If you take a, a little selfie of you holding your prompt challenge and your favorite flower that you did throughout the month, you get an extra time in your basket. Remember, you don't have to have completed all 21 to be entered into the contest, okay? There's going to be two drawings. One is for the people that have done everything, all 21, and they have a bigger prize. And then I have some happy mail and a, and a little something something for those of you that have done what you could through this month because I will never punish you for uh, being creative, okay? So if you got two done, so be it. You got into your journal two times this month and created some flowers and matched it up to a technique. I want to show you this one today, okay? A lot of you um, maybe follow me over on Instagram. If you don't, that'd be amazing. Sugar Hill Art Studio right over on the gram. And um, I've got a reel over there. I was talking about um, masking fluid. Okay, and so today I'm going to show you fun with masking fluid. So let's get going because Art Snacks is 30 minutes of just fun, right? All right, so let me set those aside. Very simple. I have a new watercolor set that I really, really love. Look at those bright, beautiful colors, right? Look at that. Uh, look how clean and new that is. That's so not like me, right? Over here at Sugar Hill, I tend to be a little messy. I'm going to set these over here. I will link everything in the video afterwards, okay? Um, I today am using the Pebe, it's actually PBO, 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 Masking Fluid Pen. It's, it's fun, it's simple. Um, it's easy to carry around. I do like Fluid Line um, an awful lot as well, but this is the one I'm using today. I want to show you. All right. So I've got some drawn on here. It, it's, it's nearing the end of its time. So hopefully she holds on just for a little bit, <laughs> just for a little bit longer. All right. I am going to just... The nice thing about masking fluid, it sometimes is like a pale green blue, sometimes it's a little bit of a gold um, tone, right? But you can see what you're doing. I always have a tendency, I don't want them to be equal, but for whatever reason I should use my opposite hand. Um, I'm going to go around twice because I like my messy scribble lines, okay? So I have a tendency to get some messy scribble lines in here. I also have some of my favorite flowers that I like to draw. So you're just treating your masking fluid like your pen, okay? And you just get it going. Let's put... some leaf. Let's do a few other flowers. Now, 
think about the size, you know, adjust your size, play with a bunch of different things, um, try some new shapes, just have fun and make some flowers, you know, you can't beat it. You really can't. We're going to leave that one, but then I'm going to do another and we'll put some stripes on it. So anywhere that I'm drawing the line, you will see it will end up staying white. Okay, let's do another big. Just like any paint pen, you just get it going again, right? Um kind of really loving these flowers lately. Big middles, little petals. They're pretty fun to play with in your journals. Um, let's just put some little, just mark make. Just add some mark making in there. Okay, let's see. Let's kind of just add Add some just random dots. You see, we get some cool flowers with this. And, oh, let's see. Let's kind of just do a middle. And then we'll kind of do some blocky petals. This is super fun to do when you are kind of hanging out on the couch uh, or you need a little break for your brain in the middle of the day you know like sometimes we just need a little bit of a break and this gets us there now i like to fill in all of my spaces um so i kind of I won't do it right now, but don't be afraid to cram in some little things, even, even a heart if you want, you know, just, just cram in some things that you might end up cutting out shapes you like, things you like. Okay. We're going to set that aside. I know these are dry because I did them a little bit earlier. If you're popping on, let me know. Say, Hey, Hey, hello. All right. Let's dig into these Yasimoto. Yes, you Tomo. Aren't they just so gorgeous? Now remember, if you're new or if you have watercolors but you don't make yourself a color grid, you need to do that. You really, really need it because these colors here don't look, you know what I mean? They can be deceiving. Eventually you get to know your watercolors, but I really suggest that you get in there and you, and I'm gonna move this over because I'm coming across with my water. You get in there and you kind of just um, enjoy your, or make the grid. Sorry, sometimes I get really distracted. <laughs> Alrighty then. So I just want to get some of this in here. You see how I don't worry too much and I'm just going to have fun kind of playing. I'm going to get into the Quinn Magenta. Now, here's the thing. I can not touch the watercolor, right? And let it just kind of be. Or I can come right in and let those colors blend in. Now, you want to come all the way out and around, okay? Because when we cut, when you cut these shapes out, you kind of, I like to have my color on the outside. Okay, see that? So I'm just going to dig in. And I'm definitely going to let these run together. And whether they run out or in, and see, I can really kind of adjust that. And we're going to let, we're going to let that be for a minute and see what happens. Okay, next one. Next one, next one. Let's do a little purple in the middle. All right, a little purple. 
purple and let's do my favorite Quinn Gold. This Quinn Gold is a little bit more yellow than my other that I love so much because it's so orange. Um, but these colors, do you see how vivid and bright they are? I love them. Very happy with this purchase. Love, love how bright they are. Okay, so we're going to kind of just let that go for a minute. They're starting to bleed together, but if I let it dry a little bit, I can kind of get more of the purple color on the inside. All right, let's go have some phalo green. I love phalo green. And I'm going to kind of rinse that off. And let's see, what do we want to do? How about some cerulean? We'll get some cerulean in here on the other side. That should be kind of cool. We'll see what they do together. And then we'll do a sap. Um sap on this side. Oh, I grabbed some yellow in there. Isn't that pretty? Grab some of that gold. Let's get that. And on the other side, I think I'm going to run some dioxinine violet. Because these are so pretty when they mix together. All right. So you're kind of getting the picture here. You're just going to keep going, keep building. Let's get in, and I'm going to just let your watercolors do their thing. Don't be afraid of leaving white. You know, have fun. Have some fun. Let's do some turquoise. All right, and I'm going to bring turquoise out and around here. And I keep going back to my purple or my magenta. Actually, what are they calling? This is, yeah, the Quinn magenta. Quinacridone magenta. It's such a pretty color. And watch when it mixes. Let me kind of pull some more of this turquoise. Kind of mix together. They're pretty cool. All right, and I think I'm going to let that dry a little bit, and then I'll put a dark blue in there. How am I doing on time? How am I doing on time? Wondering what to do with the heart. Throw that in there. Throw a little pink in there. This one, let's do pink half. And maybe some yellow half, because I love the orange they make. So you guys are kind of getting the general idea, right? We're kind of just in playing with the color. This is called rose. It's a very, it's like mauve-y. And I'm going outside the lines because when I cut, I want them to, uh, I want you to be able to see them. Uh, let's do some indigo. That might be kind of pretty. All right. All right, so what I need to do, because I don't have one, I do need to get the dryer. I am sorry about that. But I need to get the dryer so I can show you guys the magic. I thought I had one that wasn't, that wasn't peeled, but I don't. I'll make sure I can get those. I'm going to dry these a bit. I apologize for having to use the dryer just a little bit. I am I'm working on just the Canson 140-pound watercolor paper pad. Nothing special. Um, they are a little bit thicker. So when you're using it in your mixed media sometimes, it's a little, it's a little too thick for people. Uh, look at C. Isn't that going to be so pretty? Watch that out. Paper towel, and then you can use this in your mixed media too. Paper towels can be your best friend. I'm going to get these dry. 
But I'm being careful. I recommend that you let them dry on their own. Um, because I don't want to mess the masking fluid up, okay? But I'm drying these just to get ahead of the game here. All right, let's hopefully. So then you let everything dry, let those watercolors dry, and then you just take your finger and you just peel that off. Oh, so satisfying. Now, because I hit it, right, with that, paper towel changed it a little bit do you see what's happening here isn't it so fun make sure these are dry they are all right here we go it's a little thin there it's coming it's coming it is the most satisfying thing how about is the table bouncing on you guys I am sorry about that I didn't think I knew I wanted to do this at my other desk so that the camera is the camera shaking really bad I hope not now the thicker your line and that's why you'll see I will I will share the other um, fluid it comes in a bottle with a little needle nose okay so you can be very exact uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit thicker this is also I think running out on me there we go I don't, I don't want to mess these up yet because these haven't you see this one coming off see how pretty now you know what, even if I take this one off and then I come back in, or if I went in with blue, but I can come in with some gel pen. Gosh, I hope that's not shaken too terribly awful for you guys. Look how fun, okay? So there's a quick, quick, quick little demonstration of how the masking fluid works. It's like super fun magic can you see that so fun all right so then and if you don't have masking fluid don't worry like so these are all masking fluid but look if you mm -hmm. don't have masking fluid you're going to grab your white gel pen and you're going to grab one that actually works or you know what, I'm going to grab, you can use up pastas too, or gel pens. Take your pick. I'm going to, I'm going to grab this just because I know this gel pen is out. And look, if you don't have, oops, let's get her going. Of shaking lots of shaking happening okay if you don't have masking fluid but you do have Posca pens or a gel pen you can accomplish the same thing okay It's super fun. I love this technique. And I've done, I've shown you guys this before. So much fun with florals. Um, look at this one. We can go in. All right. And then maybe we take some dots. And we can come in here and do kind of a wiggly squiggly random line um, right. and then there's also a lot of magic that happens when we cut them out 
So I want to show you that real quick too. And I am going quick. You can use black. Another one of my favorites is gold, black, and white. Okay. Gel pens, Posca markers. You certainly could get in and have lots of fun with all colors of Posca markers. Let me show you. Let's see if sometimes gold does some really cool things. Especially on a leaf. Okay. And then we get even more awesomeness when we come in and we cut. So masking fluid. It's not something that you need in your in your stash of art supplies, but it certainly is fun. All right, just remember the thicker you put it on, see how nice and thick these lines are? The thicker you put it on, the more white you get to blend off. Um, for bigger projects, yes, uh, rubber cement does work for this. But I always recommend if you're using fine watercolors and depending on what you want to do. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Depending on what you want to do and the outcome you're going for, you can accomplish some really cool looks. Let's get that out of there. Let's cut out a couple of these. So you can leave. Okay, these, these are a little different. Look at, you can leave a little bit of white around the outside. These are all pieces that go into your bits box, my friends. That lovely bits box. You can leave the white on the outside or if you have white line on the inside or a colored line, you know, you can keep it to the color. See? There's a difference there. And let's kind of zigzag around here. There is no perfect exact science to these. The more you play, the more fun you'll have. But I definitely wanted to show you guys the masking fluid technique because it is oh so fun to draw in that pen. Let it dry, let your masking fluid dry and then paint over it and paint all the way around the outside and get that great color. All right. And so just tons of flowers. Let's see if I have... I'll just grab this color. Maybe this will, things will show up a little bit. And you can see, probably should have grabbed a different leaves and flowers, petals, and you just keep them all in your bits box. So much fun, right? So grab yourself a little bit of, grab yourself a little bit of Masking fluid, your watercolors, step outside if it's warm where you are, which I'm not sure because it's kind of freezing here. So I'm not sure if it's warm in too many other places of my regular followers. If you're up north, I think you're freezing. Um, but yeah, there you go. And then just collect these and keep adding them into your bits box. And as you are art journaling, or finding, um, you know, just creating pages in your art journals and you feel like changing things up a little bit, you've got a little stash of beautiful flowers and shapes to go to and use. All right, guys, thank you for joining me today on Art Snacks. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed week. 
Also remember, May 9th to the 14th, okay, perfect time for Mother's Day, we are opening Sugar Hill Creatives. They don't typically open in the spring, but I wanted to bring it. I had a lot of people inquire, so I'm definitely going to open that for you The um, a little bit before that. So the 8th, 9th, and 10th, I will be running a um, blooming mixed media workshop. So be on the lookout for that. You're going to start seeing that in your email. If you're not on my email list, get on it. There's a link in here that'll take you to my website. It'll take you so you can check out more about Sugar Hill Creatives, my membership, more about getting on the newsletter. Uh, this will be posted again later in on YouTube. So much fun. All right. Remember, if you ever have any questions, you just message me, let me know, um, and I will get back to you. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you soon.